Hello, and welcome to Shift Change. If you've seen our channel, you know that we very often dress up the baby in historical garb, which isn't always the most practical thing for people trying to attend Renaissance fairs or just have that little bit of historical flair. So, in this video, we got some tips and tricks for you of how to create those looks without losing your mind trying to dress small children in historical garb. 42 buttons on a baby is super cute until you have to button them. Looking at books of vintage sewing techniques, they actually had some really good ideas about how to get clothes to last longer for children. Some of those things that they did were hem skirts and shorts and pants up a lot higher to leave extra room. So as your child grew, you could let out the hem so that it would grow with the child. They'd also put pleats around the waistband to have extra room to grow wide as well. While there are some great vintage and historical techniques that we can use, we also have some great modern techniques that we can use to help dress the kids. First, I want to look at our Tudor-inspired Snow White look. We started with the skirt because skirts, as you know, can be adjusted a lot easier. We added suspenders to them so that they would be held up exactly where we wanted them, and we made sure to add buttons on the waistband so that it would be adjustable for different sizes as the baby grew. Because this was a video that we filmed in the fall, we wanted to use heavier weight materials that kept our baby warm so that we wouldn't have to layer as much. And while we did layer for extra warmth, which was a historical technique, we made sure that the materials that we used were going to help insulate that warmth. The top was made out of velvet and the skirt was made out of wool, which are typically not materials that we would use on ourselves, but on a baby, you don't need as much yardage, which made it a lot easier for us to use those thicker, heavyweight materials to help insulate and keep warm. Another thing we were able to do with the top is add the grommets and the lacing detail up the front. One thing that I did was make the shirt big enough to pull over like a regular t-shirt so that you get the historical look of the lacing without the hassle of having to lace up a toddler. As Edna Mode said, no capes. However, capes were historically accurate and super cute on toddlers. So one thing that we did with our cape was make them easy to unclip and take off so that traveling with the baby in the car seat, we didn't have to worry about any choking hazards and things like that, where we could constantly be watching him while he was wearing his cape for extra safety. For the baby's winter coat, we intentionally made it bigger so that if we needed to layer more underneath, we could do that on top of the already layered coat that we made for him. Because we could fully customize the baby's winter coat, we wanted to add a nice lining to the hood of the coat so that it would help protect the baby's hair. We used a scrap of bridal satin for the hood and it really served its purpose in protecting the baby's hair. Another look that had a lot of secrets built into it was the orange prince look that we did when it started getting a little warmer. So while the snow white look we were trying to add warmth and add layers, with the orange look we were trying to subtract as many layers as possible so that he wouldn't overheat in the outfit. One way that we achieved this was by sewing the undershirt to the overgarment. That way, it was all one layer, and we only had to worry about the one layer. Historically, you would have seen an undershift with the jerkin put over it. In this case, we just sewed it all into one, so the sleeve details that you saw were technically the shift and the overgarment, when in actuality it was all just one piece. We also wanted to put a drawstring into the pants so that the pants could be adjustable for the baby as he grew. Kids grow very, very fast, as you may or may not know. So we wanted to make sure that this was an outfit that he'd be able to wear more than just one time. You may have also noticed all of the buttons. Trying to do all of those buttons would have been an absolute nightmare. So we 
did a little sneaky and put a zipper behind the buttons and added snaps so that it looked like there was full buttons down the garment when in actuality it was just a zip and a couple snaps. The baby's Juneteenth look, which was a brown Ankara fabric, also had a couple of techniques that we tried out as well. One of the things that we used was magnetic closures so that we could take it on and off really easily. This gave us the opportunity to get the baby dressed very, very easily in the summer, which was extremely helpful. We also added this crazy thing called elastic to the waistband so that it was the most historical. <laughs> no, but really, we used it because it made it so much easier to be able to get the pants on and off and achieve that pleated look without having to actually make a closure for the pants. Making outfits entirely from scratch can still be expensive though. So with the sleeping gown that we made for the baby, we took an old vintage smock and made additions to it to help add that historical feel without breaking our budget. Before we made any changes to the gown, it was a pretty simple smock. It didn't have a wide neck, it was a really long white skirt type material, and that was really it. We added some embellishments, some black work, and an extra panel in the back to help make it fit the baby better, and it looked absolutely historical without us having to do a lot of work or really change much at all. Because the gown originally tied in the back, we didn't really have to change a whole lot there either. By adding the extra panels, we were able to basically slip it over the baby's head and wear as a big nightgown. And he still wears it sometimes today. We have one more look for you, and no footage of this outfit has been released yet. The last look we have for you is this adorable pineapple look that we're creating for upcoming videos within the next few months. It has such an easy pattern and was so easily altered to fit exactly what we were looking for. What we did is found a really neat print on a shirt that was way too big for the baby, and we made leg holes out of the bottom of the shirt, so it became a romper. We added a simple piece of elastic around the waistband with a boning channel on the inside, and bada bing bada boom, you got a 40s look that's super adorable and super easy for the baby. And you don't even have to add buttons. They're already there. We only spent $5.99 on this outfit because we already had all the other materials that we needed. It was super easy and was able to give us a historical look without very much effort at all. There is such a stigma about making historical clothing for children because kids do grow up and especially toddlers could potentially outgrow the outfit that you just made for them within a couple weeks. Historical costumes can get really expensive, and so it makes sense that you don't want to spend too much money on an outfit that you know your child is going to outgrow. So some of the ways that we get around this are by only using scraps from previous projects, or going to donation sites, or asking friends who have extra scraps to help use those pieces to create new pieces, and really use up all the fabric that we have. This isn't just for fabric either. We like to reuse zippers and buttons from previous projects so that nothing goes to waste. Those onesies that your baby definitely doesn't fit in anymore, you can use those zippers. They're still baby sized. I hope that some of these tips help you make these outfits for your children and encourage you to have your kids dress historically. I know it's not the most easy thing to do, but I think that these tips will help you in achieving the look that you're going for without making you lose your mind. If this is the first video of the costume symposium that you're watching, there is so much more to see, so feel free to look at all the other things that are coming out for Cozy. There's so much that is just waiting to be watched. If this is your first time to court, welcome. And if you've 
been here before, welcome back. We always love having you. If you like what you saw today, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you can see everything that's happening in the court. Until next time.